Welcome to Bart and Tart Talk About Art. Bling, 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 bling. Since you picked this this image, and just to explain, the image is a piece of Picasso ceramics, and it's essentially sort of a, a green plate, um, and there's a fork on there, and some kind of fish, and what looks like half a lemon. Um, and this is a this is a poster from Louisiana, but um, it is of this piece of ceramic art by Picasso. And uh, Simao, why did you pick this as uh, an image we should discuss and look at? Yes. Okay. So um, I picked this because I saw it in uh, Louisiana, mm. in the museum itself. And I must uh, in a, in a, in that particular exhibition that was an exhibition of uh, uh, ceramics of Picasso, mm. and I must say that it was one of the best um, one of the best exhibitions that I've ever seen. One of the exhibitions that impressed me the most. Mm. I really uh, love Picasso and. The reason why I love Picasso the most is because of uh, ceramics and because of uh, his prints, because of the lino cuts, because of his etchings and all of that. I think for me personally, what makes him brilliant is uh, the ceramics and the prints and all of that, that I think he's very uh, creative, uh, not only like formally, you know, but also like technically mm. creative. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, so and, what if, 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 uh, if you were to pinpoint what it is you love about Picasso's ceramics and let's, let's use this piece of it as an example. Was it, what yeah. is it that strikes you so much about this? Yeah. I, I think this is a great example because, um, this is, there is so many things uh, on, uh, about this picture that I love. Mm. And I think when I talk about Picasso being creative uh, technically, mm. is that I think this picture, this, uh, this particular uh, piece of art, art is very uh, creative in the way that he picked a plate that was already bought, I'm assuming. Mm. Uh, a, a plate that you would use just to eat, right? right? Something right. that you can find on any shop. Mm -hmm. And then what did he do? He uh, made a very raw fish, the, the, he, he, like with a piece of uh, with a piece of uh, clay. Mm -hmm. He made a very raw fish, a very raw lemon slice, right? Mm -hmm. A very raw fork. You know, he puts a little bit. He, he puts a little bit of glaze. He glazed a little bit. He painted a little bit with the uh, ceramic glazes, with ceramic paint, and mm. he put it again in the oven. And so, the raw, the raw uh, creation of Picasso then is combined with something that is industrial, mm. that is already ready-made. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very, that's quite uh, creative because he literally puts a fish. You know, on the plate. You know, like when you when well, you not when literally you eat, though. It's not an actual fish, though, is it? No, no, it's not an actual fish, but it's like you mm. know, it's like when you put when you're eating and you put a fish because you put something, you put a fish like a you know a fish that he designed himself that created himself on a plate that mm -hmm. was already done. So it's kind of like kind of like creating your own uh, make. Um, made believe the um, make believe um, you know like children do you know a mm -hmm. um, make believe uh, fish with a make believe fork with make believe lemon on a piece of uh, on a piece of plate and that's what i love about uh, picasso is his playfulness right that i think he has the most in um, with the, with with the ceramics and with the lino cuts and all of that, because I think it, it seems like he, he was not taking this medium uh, as uh, seriously in the sense that it was not as, you know, dramatic, as heavy mm -hmm. as the paintings sometimes were, you know, it seems like the paintings were like, you know, for more for, you know, for the important people, for, you know, the kind of... Uh, uh, 
the front of the artist to the world, you know, and this right. was something more that he, 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 he allowed himself to be a bit more playful. Not that in the paintings he was not playful, sometimes he was, but for me personally, a lot of the times he was a bit, a bit boring, to be honest. Right. So, but yeah. what does this, like, so when you look at this, what you see is like a clever idea, um, but does it communicate anything to you beyond the cleverness? Many things, yes. Many, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I, I think it's, first of all, it's playful. I love the thing that it's, you know, it makes my brain laugh in a way, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's very it playful, very you. childish, that kind of childish game of creating art in that way. So I love that, that, that in itself uh, gives me something. And then I love the, the raw, the raw, the roughness of the way that he, that, uh, of the, um, of the things that he designs mm -hmm. on top that he, that he, that he, uh, he molds with the clay. I love that. But on top of that, so I am Portuguese, right? Mm -hmm. Portugal is right next to Spain. So for me, I, I, many, many times I've eaten sardines, Mm. like this mm. you know mm. it's something that reminds me of my uh, of my personal experiences so i love that it, it, got, it comes it brings back those kind of memories a lot of childhood memories of eating sardines which i also love i love the taste of of sardines and then on top of that there is in uh, i'm probably i guess that in spain as well but certainly in portugal there's this tradition of creating this kind of kitsch art right. of uh, plates with, uh, with, for example, with lobsters or with fruit, mm. you know, that you hang on the wall. So for me, this plate, this thing is also a take on that kind of very kitsch, very extremely kitsch concept and making it high art. Mm. you know mm. and make it uh, aesthetically uh, pleasing right so i think that's i think that's brilliant mm. to be honest mm. yeah very evocative in many many different uh, ways for me right i yeah. was wondering have you ever eaten uh, uh, sardines before I'm not sure, maybe like once or twice, but it's definitely not part of my childhood in that same way. I mean, I think no. it's funny because I think to me, um, this doesn't speak to me in the same way that it speaks to you. And I understand everything you're saying and I, I do enjoy it um, on the level that you're talking about. But I think I think I'm somebody who with with art and with images in general, I'm always looking for storytelling in them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and this for me feels more like a decorative object than it feels like um, something that tells a story. And I, of course, I understand. Like for for you, it has this a nostalgic appeal as well. Like you relate to. It feels like it's communicating something maybe to you about childhood meals and the playfulness of the expression combined with the the the, the nostalgic quality of of that particular kind of meal. Um, but then it doesn't resonate with me on that level. And so what I'm seeing yeah. is something that is, that is fun and that is definitely pleasing. I mean, uh, the, the, it's also a very nice little composition and the way the, the fork is arranged relative to the fish and then the lemon. And it's, yeah. it's definitely somebody who is a master composer uh, of images. Um, yeah. uh, to be sure. Um, but, but to me, yeah. it's like, well, there it is. I, it doesn't make me think it doesn't uh it doesn't make me wonder it doesn't make me confused i i, I like to be a little mm -hmm. confused when i'm looking i like to like for me the ideal image is an image that makes me confused but also makes me feel like my confusion could be resolved if i spend enough time mm -hmm. thinking about it yeah th this is very I much what you see is what you get right absolutely absolutely uh, yeah, I think you, you can. You, you mentioned the word decorative. I don't think you can go any more decorative mm. than this. Mm. Exactly. And that's also what I like about Picasso, is that you know he lived, he started, I I believe before 
World, World War II, and it continued after World War II when, you know, performance art came, and even before, you know, when you think of, like, Marcel Duchamp and mm. all those people mm. that were more about, you know, breaking the cons- of breaking with the rules and what art can be and what art cannot be. And Picasso also did that, you know, he, mm. he was one of the, the pioneers of Cubism and all of that, but he never stopped being decorative no you know he never broke with that he never stopped being a bourgeois he never stopped uh, he never tried to stop being that you know and and i think this specific thing is the quintessential thing of you know of a bourgeois mm-hmm. piece mm-hmm. of art you know because it's a take on kitsch you know on the mm. Uh, on the middle class way of living, on the very obvious aesthetic, on what is just pleasing to the eye, you know, I like that. I I, I like that. I like that. It's that it is assumedly, you know, decorative. And and for me, the, there is a story. It's a very uh, simple story, which is a fish and a woman that are about to be eaten with a fork. You know, which those, you know, it's kind of a still life, right? Those mm-hmm. the still lives also have a long tradition related to the to the bourgeoisie and you know to decorate the house and just to be a, a statement of status, right? To show right. what the owners of the the painting had or wanted to have, you know, to show wealth mm-hmm. and and all of that. And in a in a way. This thing is still a, a still life, so it goes in the tradition of that thing of, right. of of still life. But at the same time, it breaks a little bit with that because usually still lives are about um, uh, showing something luxurious, right? Very, you know, it's usually ducks and you know lobster and very exotic fruit or very fresh fruit and beautiful flowers and all of that. This is the opposite. This is a meal that could be eaten by a fisherman, right? You know, it's the simplest meal, or even not by by a fisherman. I, I'm pretty sure. I this this. Uh, I'm not. I, I'm not sure exactly of the time that this was made, but Picasso. I believe that he died in the 80s, um, or in the very early 90s. I think it was the 80s. But anyway, when this was made, I, uh, you know. Spain and Portugal had just left uh, a dictatorship, and both co- both countries, m- more Portugal, I-, I think, were very poor. So this kind of, of meal, as as far as I know, was uh, something that was very affordable by the by the lower classes. So I think that's funny too that even though you know he was so connected to the bourgeoisie, he's able to present something that is so so basic mm. so and so like from not so not from the bourgeoisie right know. right he's uh he died in 1973 i just just looked in 73 up. okay yeah, yeah, yeah so i messed up that never mind never mind that yeah yeah i mean uh you've convinced me to like it uh <laughs> <laughs> I would like to have that hanging on my wall, to be sure. It's a lot of fun. Right? I, think I would also... love to have that hanging on my wall. I would love to have so many Picassos on... There's so many Picasso stuff that I would love to have on my wall. Mm. But I think also, like, one thing you said that... And, and, and you differ from me a little bit. Like, you're somebody who creates visual storytelling himself. And so mm-hmm. you talked about looking at this and thinking, what a clever idea which is yeah. that's more of an artist's take is that you're looking at it and you're thinking, could I have come up with that? Could I come up with something like that? You're sort of you're reverse engineering it a little bit where I'm more just looking at it like a consumer and saying, what does mm-hmm. this tell me? Um, but I, I think there is, it is the kind of art that, that makes you kind of, now that I think about it, that makes you kind of want to come up with ideas like this, you know, and want to play around like this, and that there's something very unsnobbish about it in that sense. Um, you know, it's a little bit like I remember when I went to university and I had classmates who really loved these sort of very lo-fi indie rock bands, 
And I think part of what they liked about them was that they weren't using a lot of chords. It wasn't very complicated. And so it felt like you could do this as well if you put your mind to it and you tried. And there was this sort of democratic appeal to it. You could also say punk rock, right, for a different generation. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, what yeah. Punk rock was, right? And there is something I, I, a little bit I punk that, rock about this as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think this really has a lot of uh, punk rock. I mean, you, you take... Uh, you take a plate from the supermarket and you make it into a, I don't know, a, a very, very expensive, I don't know how many thousands or even millions of dollars that thing costs, but you know, the, the source is very punk and, mm. and, and the way, the way that he does the, that he, that he molds the, uh, the, the ceramic, I'm not sure if I'm using the right, uh, the right mm. word. Mm. Um, but the way that he molds the clay, it's very punk. It's it's super basic, super simple. You know, mm. he's, he's not trying to make it pretty or to make it realistic in any way. You know, it's just like, yeah. You know, it's so so punk. Yeah, I love that. It's funny sure. also the way in which like he's obviously applied some sort of glaze to the fork to give it that sort of metallic look, um, and also the yellow on the fish. But then the green, it seems like he's applied the green last. So it's sort of, there's uh -huh. some of it on top of the fork and the fish as well. And it, it just gives it this quality of sort of being a little sort of slapdash, a little sort of, again, sort of playful, just like, well, ah, whatever, you know, just slap it on there. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. Though I believe, because, you know, I did ceramics myself and I believe that here's what happened. The mm. plate that he bought was probably green. Mm. Okay, and mm -hmm. the plate was already cooked. Right. So he had somehow to glue, to glue the the new fresh uh, uh, the new fresh clay with already a cooked plate, right? And mm -hmm. one way of doing that is to glaze on top of the previous things, you know, the green, so that the green uh, the the new green the new green fuses with the old green. Mm -hmm. of the plate and so it's it, the the two the two um, uh, merge a little more uh, seemingly mm. does that make sense i think so yeah mm -hmm. i think i understand and also I, I also that's pretty clever and it gives a very raw uh mm -hmm. look very raw appeal right 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 yeah yeah it's a nice piece to be sure and yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think I had a lot to say about it, but I can see how there is quite a lot to say about it. Yeah, I think you need to eat some sardines from, <laughs> from the salt to relate a bit more. I need to be reincarnated as a Portuguese man in yeah. sardines as but a also, child, and then I will also, unlock the true meaning of this mm -hmm, piece. Absolutely. But I, I can tell you that I've never had sardines with lemon, so that's Ooh. also future something to try myself. So yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe yeah. that's uh, maybe that's the the real art unlocked here. Yeah, mm. and and also that's also the thing that uh, that for me it's so um, it's a thing that it's not just with the eyes, but you uh, for me I also it pleases me with the mouth. You know, it has like a a taste. Mm. You know, it's an artwork that has almost a taste. It's synesthetic in a way. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and that's also what I like about Picasso in general, is that his stuff, when it's, when it's playful, it brings out that thing, you know, that joie de vivre, that pleasure mm. of living, of enjoying life. Mm. And, f and food, and this kind of simple food, that is here that is on that plate is it's it's for me it's a part a piece of enjoying life you know just this very simple thing that you can eat a very affordable sardine but you can have so much fun eating it it can be so enjoyable you know it's also interesting, i love that uh, oh sorry no i i was just saying that i love that it's a it's a uh, something to remind us that you know some things in life can simple th some simple things in life can make it so much more enjoyable mm. it's also interesting i think in the are those fish actually yellow what well, i'm thinking i'm looking at it and i'm thinking this seems like the sun is shining on this plate like it gives off that sort of mediterranean summer vibe mm -hmm. 
And I wonder yeah. if it's in the colors he's used as well, or if that fish actually is that color. Um, but but there, it seems like he's sort of through the color is expressing the light, a, a certain kind of light on there. Mm -hmm. This isn't a gray yeah, day in Britain or yeah, something. Right. Um, so I think that's part yeah. of it as well. I think that's a part of the sort of the Mediterranean schwad of evil that you, you get from mm -hmm. this. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that's oh, Picasso. That's, Is it? Yeah. Does it have a name, this piece? I don't know. No. It could be. Probably sar sardine on a plate with lemon. Yeah, sure. Why not? Two million dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's worth it. I mean, probably not. But, <laughs> you know, if I had a, if I had a two million dollars or, or, or a few million dollars, I would I would put on this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, if you know, I would also put on making a revolution or something like that. You know, but afterwards, <laughs> I would buy this stuff. <laughs> <laughs>